Ah, the air quality in a third tier city in Guangdong, China. So a lot I could say about this issue. Several good points in the email, and I'll try and add a few more. Uh, as far as Western Taiwan cities go, they just don't have great air quality. They're not awful either though, but there's no way you can have that many scooters, that level of human density, the industrial production, and not have some air quality issues. On the other hand though, Tainan's air quality is in no way worse than Jiangmen's. Let me ask you this, when's the last time you saw the sun? I can't say for a fact, but I can't remember it being a thing to see the sun in Tainan. What about a building across the street from you being hazy? Or even worse, being inside and noticing haziness? This happens at the shopping malls on bad air days here. Uh, so it got real bad here around Chinese New Year, and I'm talking about 200 plus levels on the AQI. I stopped doing outdoor activities at that point. I bought a 3M uh, N95 mask, model number 9501, folds up real nice and tight in my pocket or backpack. I agree the surgical masks and cloth scooter masks do little more than give a psychological safety net. As for the levels, I think of it like this. 1 to 50 is Bay Area. This ain't going to happen in China, Chinese cities for a while. 50 to 100 is the best you can hope for, really. And you got to just pretend life is normal with those numbers, or you have to accept always walking around wearing a mask. 100 to 150, I'm still doing most of my normal life stuff, but I'm probably taking easy on the working out and the physically strenuous outdoor activities. 150 plus, only going outside if I need to, and I'm talking the five minute walk I have to do between my apartment and work. Uh, and I am considering wearing a mask. 200 plus, the mask is on, even though probably I'll be the only person walking around with a mask on because that seems to be not a significant level here. I think until it goes over 250 or 300, people don't seem to take much notice here. At this point, I can more or less gauge the AQI number just by looking out my window and seeing what the visibility is. Um, there's some mountains and different sets of buildings, and if I can or can't see some of those, I can make a pretty good guess at what the air pollution level is. A couple of notes I've read on the masks. So N95 means it's going to filter 95% of the PM2.5. Uh, but that's if it's fitted on the face properly. And what I was reading was that the side ear strap where you do one little loop over each ear, those just don't allow for a good snug fit, too much airflow in and out on the sides. Um, so what you need to do is get a mask that's actually going over the back of the head and the neck and getting that secure fit. But obviously that's less convenient for the taking on and off. So even the mask that I have, I need to modify that one so that it gets the full fit. Uh, and then as for the Under the Dome documentary, locals were mentioning it here before it got banned. Uh, what I was told with it was that there was a lot of discussion on Weixin, or WeChat as you guys might know it. Uh, it's kind of Facebook plus Line rolled up into one app. I think on a side note, if the US just wanted to hack WeChat, they would be able to shut China down at least for a while because it seems like all life is happening through WeChat, be it business, social, whatever. So anyway, back to the documentary. Um, yeah, it can be found if you have a VPN, no problem, YouTube and such. Uh, what I heard was that it had been pulled from Chinese video websites. I haven't really bothered to check. Um, and I guess thinking about the whole VPN and internet thing, because that was really the first challenge that I had when I came out here, the first kind of very obvious and real reminder of the separation from the rest of the world. So there's multiple domes going on to speak. I guess one problem is that the VPN creates a pretty decent or at least functional solution for the internet filtering. And there really is no similar kind of solution for the uh, air quality. So, and then if you start thinking about it too much, you go, well, okay, even if I have all these 
air filters in the house and I wear masks and I don't go out when the you know air quality is bad. What about the food you're eating? You know, that's getting grown in the air, in the soil. Okay, are you eating all imported foods? You know, can everyone afford that? Can you even trust it? Um, speaking of trust, there's even been issues with the masks where some of the masks that are branded and sold as, let's say, N95, um, they're actually, this is China, right? So they're actually just fake knockoffs and they're not really um, up to that standard. So anyway, I've actually been meaning to bring up this topic with you guys and the kind of interesting comparison and differences between air quality here and in Taiwan. Um, that was one nice thing of being back in San Diego was the was that kind of just normal air quality and it not being a special thing or seeing the blue sky and all that. Um, and really the way I feel about it at this point, the, the air quality issue is the main thing that kind of makes me uncomfortable about being in China or makes me feel like it would be an unlikely thing to stay in China long term and stuff. So it, it, that says kind of a lot about how severe of an issue it is. Anyway, those are uh, some of my thoughts and experiences so far about the Jiangmen air quality. Uh, yeah, let me know what you guys are thinking.